Okay, welcome everyone. I think we're uh, we're ready to get things rolling here today. Uh, my name is Devin Rang, Vice President of Business Development here at Spinutech, and I'll serve as our pseudo MC for our webinar discussion today. Um, if we've got any first timers joining us today, I want to start by just kind of introing Spinutech just a little bit. Uh, Spinutech is a full service digital agency. We have offices in Cedar Falls and Des Moines, Iowa, and Tampa, Florida. Uh, plus remote team members in more than 30 states. And by my count, I think as of probably exactly two minutes ago, uh, we've got about 170 team members um, in the company today. Uh, and each and every one of those team members brings an expertise to the table uh, when it comes to building full funnel strategies that drive traffic and convert leads. But I think most importantly, we pride ourselves on being forward thinkers. We're always thinking ahead, especially for our clients. And today we're looking, looking ahead to July 1st. That's when Google will officially be turning out the lights on universal analytics and ushering in a new era of web analytics with Google Analytics 4. It's without a doubt the most dramatic update the platform to the platform since Google first launched Google Analytics back in 2005. But the good news is, is that you're in the right place if you're looking to understand what this latest version of GA means for you and your business. So on that note, I want to introduce the uh, the three team members from our data and analytics team uh, who will be walking you through this crash course today. They've all been studying GA4 uh, backwards and forwards for months now. Uh, if you recall, we, we talked about this last fall just a little bit. Um, and today we're going to kind of scratch the surface just a little bit um, and and, uh, and hopefully come up with some, some engaging conversation uh, from that point on. So without further ado, uh, let me start here. Jeremy Schmidt, uh, who is our web analytics team lead, will be walking us through uh, the first portion here today. Uh, we also have Jenna Olette, one of our web analysts. And closing us out will be the one and only Anna Pritchard, our data science team lead. Um, you'll notice just a few housekeeping things here. You'll notice that we've got the chat function disabled uh, for the webinar today, uh, but there is a Q&A function. So as we go through the slides and as each of our speakers kind of dive into their content, if something hits you and you have a question, feel free to throw that in there um, and we will monitor that and, and uh, attack those as the speakers are, are all finished. So that's enough for me. I will get out of the way. Uh, Jeremy, why don't you take us away? Awesome. Thank you, Devin. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. As Devin mentioned, my name is Jeremy Schmidt. I am the web analytics team lead here at Spinutech. Um, so to kind of set the table here on the first slide, I thought I, would, I think this is an interesting slide just to give people a, an understanding of the evolution of analytics. Maybe a lot of you on the call know this, maybe you don't. Um, but really kind of the, the important takeaway here is, you know, obviously Google Analytics was acquired Urchin back in 2005. Um, really in 2005, you could have placed a script on your website and you could continue to collect analytics data all the way up to what we currently you know, previously used with universal analytics, meaning every evolution of Google Analytics continued to migrate into itself. That data continued to collect. You had a full historical look back of all that data since 2005. This is kind of the big talking point in terms of the industry about why Google Analytics 4 is such a big deal, right? It's, it requires action. It's requiring us to, to kind of stop and take some additional action to move forward in order to collect data. So as you can see there on that line underneath, we can collect that data from Urchin all the way up through Universal, but now we do have that stop gap with Google Analytics 4, which ultimately was released in 2020, and now moving up to obviously the July 1st of this year, that data will stop collecting in that previous instance, and all the data will be within GA4. So again, just put that in there to kind of lay the foundation in terms of the urgency around this and kind of the big why in terms of um, the change with analytics. As I mentioned, um, and as as, we, as Devin kind of alluded to in the in the start here, effective July 1st, um, so basically a month, we will no longer be collecting data within universal analytics. Now, a couple of caveats to that. If you do have 360, um, the paid version of Google Analytics, it will continue to collect through 2024 of July 1st. Um, and I also will point out on this slide, there's been rumblings um, from Google that you'll still have access to your universal analytics property. So once July 1st hits, you're going to be able to log into analytics and you're going to be able to access your historical data with inside your universal analytics property. But keep in mind, 
they have talked about within six months or potentially 12 months, they haven't released a solid deadline. They're actually talking of removing that entire property itself from your analytics, meaning when you log in, you will no longer see that property there and you would just see your GA4 instance. Again, I don't I don't say that say this to put extreme urgency behind it, but just to be something aware of um, and keep track of as we kind of move forward here. So I'm not going to deep dive into all these because there's a lot of changes, right? So I'm going to kind of pick my way through here. And obviously, Jenna will get into some and Anna will as well. But the big thing you're going to hear me talk about to kind of start this presentation today is events. So if you can leave today think remembering one thing, I would advise that you remember that Universal Analytics has multiple hit types. You could There could be a page view. There could be a transaction event. You could be sending a custom event to Universal Analytics. With Google Analytics 4, everything that comes into the platform is going to record as an event. So if you just open a web page, you go to spinutech.com and you hit the home page. Previously, that was a page view for Universal Analytics. And in today's version of Google Analytics, it's an event that's classified as a page view. So that's a that's a big reason why you're going to see the reason why they, they're stopping the collection of data with Universal Analytics and they're making us start this new rendition is because it's not an apples to apples comparison. So that's a big one. Another one I'll point out here is the custom events, which is the third one down. I'm not sure how many of you on the call today are doing granular tracking and passing custom events from your website to uh, analytics. But if you are, you might be using a event category action and labels. Um, this is a very nice way to kind of bundle data together in a hierarchy fashion and drill into it. Um, that is no longer available with Google Analytics 4. Now, you are still able to pass custom events and you can pass them with as many parameters as you want. It's just going to be a different way in terms of the way you're collecting the data in Google Analytics and the way you're running reports on them. The last thing I'll kind of point out here, and, and we'll get deeper into this as we go on, um, is the setup. So today with Universal Analytics, you would have an account, you would have a property, and then under that property, you could have a view. You might have a test view, you might have a filtered view. A lot of a lot of a lot of our clients have multiple views, right? With Google Analytics 4, you're going to have the account and the property, but underneath that, there will no longer be views. So views are going away completely with Google Analytics 4, and instead you will have data streams that can be configured based off the settings that you want. So again, they will be data streams, but you're not going to see that three-level approach. And the last thing I'll point out here on this slide before we move forward is just the data retention, the very last line item there. This is a big one as well. So Google Analytics 4 is going to let you look back 14 months on your data. So if you're running a custom report, which they call exploratory reports in Google Analytics 4, you're going to be able to see a look back window of 14 months. With Universal Analytics, that would be unlimited. So just something to keep in mind um, if you are looking down the road from now to do historical reporting. I'll go through this one relatively quickly. The really the only thing I wanted to point out is kind of the bottom left box there where I have circled in orange. And really, you don't need to get into this, but what I'm trying to point out is the whole event thing, right? So if you would open up your Universal Analytics account today, you would go to the admin section and you go into your property. You're going to see the number of hits that that property has collected. And what that's telling you is every interaction that took place on your website goes to Universal Analytics and it's recorded as a hit type. And those could be scrolls, those, those could be form fills, those could be page views. They could be really anything and everything that's collected in Google Analytics 4. If we go to the next slide here, this kind of hits in on that, what I talked about where everything is an event. So on that previous slide, maybe you had 25,000 hits in your Universal Analytics property, and they could have been a multitude of the different um, categories on the left. Whereas in GA4, those 25,000 different hits that I just referenced, those would all be events that would then be categorized as different types of events. So it would be event, and that event type would be a page view. It would be an event that would be a custom, you know, maybe it's a custom event and you're passing a parameter with it. So again, I know I keep saying event, but it is really the foundational difference between Universal Analytics and GA4. Another thing I wanted to point out here that is, is super important, um, and this is a pretty plain slide, but I just pointed out because it's going to be, a, a, a in my opinion, a, a big difference in those that are using the session metric. So again, if you're going back and you're trying, which I, I wouldn't recommend this, 
But if you're trying to compare universal analytics to GA4, just keep in mind you're going to see differences in session count. And a big reason behind this is universal analytics does not estimate a session count, right? It's going to be the actual number. Google Analytics 4 will estimate your session count. Um, so again, this is where we get into the, the conversation of, hey, I'm, I'm trying to compare how many sessions I had in Google Analytics 4 this year versus what I had in Universal Analytics a year ago. Keep in mind, I'm not saying you can't do that, but look at it more directionally versus, versus concrete, right? You know, maybe you saw a percentage increase here, percentage increase there, but I would not look at it as an apples to apples comparison rather than just understanding there's going to be differences between these two platforms. Another thing on this kind of note is your user count, right? So what's important to understand now is if you're looking at users and trying to understand, you know, what's my user count, you know, how many people are coming to the site, maybe have different audiences, how are those audiences bundled? With universal analytics, they used one specific way to determine if I came to a website and I came back, am I the same person? And how they did that with universal analytics was using the device ID. So every time you access a website, you're using a device, right? Whether you're on your laptop, your phone, whatever the case may be. And that device has a specific ID that's part of a cookie that's telling Google Analytics, this is who you are. With Google Analytics 4, they're actually gonna try a three-tier approach. The first thing they're gonna do is figure out if you're logged in, right? So I don't know how many of you use Chrome. I'm guessing a good percentage on, on the call today do. I'm guessing you might be logged in in the upper right-hand corner of your browser. And if you are, that would be the first attempt in terms of how they're gonna do that. If, they, if that's unsuccessful, then they're going to go to Google Signals, meaning if you're opted into advertising, and the third attempt would be the device ID. So they're going to use a multi-tiered approach in terms of determining, can we bring more of a user life cycle and extend that user life cycle to understand what these people are doing if they are hitting the site multiple times? Another thing I wanted to point out, and I'm not going to get deep into this, is just, again, I keep talking about how Google Analytics 4 is event-based. And so just keep in mind, if there are individuals on the call that were using session-based custom dimensions in universal analytics, that those are going away. This is kind of a niche thing, depending on what you're trying to accomplish in your analytics environment. I've implemented multiple different types of session-based custom dimensions with universal analytics. Just know that this is going away. I have heard rumblings again that this will be coming back. But right now, if you were to go into GA4 and try to build a session-based custom dimension, that is not possible. So you, my, my recommendation would be to modify that into a hit-based custom dimension. The last couple of slides I have here before I hand it off to my colleague Jenna is just to point out the unassigned bucket, right? So the unassigned bucket is similar to the other bucket that you're used to with universal analytics, right? If they can't define traffic, it goes into a bucket. In universal analytics, that's called other. In GA4, that's called unassigned. So that's what that bucket's going to be when you're in there. And that's that's determined by what your UTM parameters are in the session when it comes to the site. So if they can't bucket it, it's going to go into unassigned. The reason I put this slide in here is actually on top of that is what we have seen, what, I, what I'm just terming as a data processing kind of um, area, if you will. So we've had multiple clients reach out to us and, and, I've, and they've said, hey, Jeremy, why is my unassigned bucket so big? Do, am I using incorrect UTMs or what's going on with the type of traffic? Why is my unassigned looking like this? And What's happening and what we're seeing is really GA4 is using the unassigned bucket as a data processing ground. So I just show this example. You can kind of see there. I know it's small, but if you look at the number of sessions on this report that it ran at 7 a.m. Um, for the day prior, we had basic or the week prior, including the day prior, we had 291 sessions. So if we go to the next slide, just to kind of point this out, later in that same day, we ran the same report. And you can see it was down to 21. So the reason I put this slide in here is to one, just say, hey, just be careful when you are using today's date or yesterday's date in any custom reporting or exploratory reporting in Google Analytics, because there could be a number of sessions that are still being attributed back to the actual um, origin of that session, right? So of those 270 different, you know, some of those went into organic, some went into paid, some went otherwise. So I would give yourself at least a couple of days buffer in terms of the types of reporting that you're running. And with that, um, I'm going to actually turn it over to Jenna Olette, and she's going to get us into an actual platform walkthrough.
Thanks, Jeremy. Hi, I'm Jenna Olette, and I'm a web analyst here at SpinUTech. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and just start walking through the platform. So I'm starting here in the admin section. You can access this at the bottom left of your GA4 property. Uh, the reason I'm starting here is because this is where all the setup happens. Um, the things you put into here will determine what you can see in your reporting. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice, as Jeremy mentioned, we no longer have a views column on the right hand side. Instead, we have data streams. So if you click into the data stream, you can actually see your website address, or if you have an application, you can also create a stream for that. And clicking into that is how we're going to get our measurement ID. So this ID is what you would plug into Google Tag Manager or other ad platforms for any integrations. Um, so you can copy it right out of here. Uh, if you can't remember how to find it, you can also search for it in the search bar at the top. And just some more uh, settings here. We have enhanced measurement now with GA4. So what this does is it allows you to automatically track events that are happening on your site without configuring any custom event tracking. Um, so by enabling this, you get some options. You can automatically track page views, scrolls, clicks. Uh, there's also file downloads and you can configure which ones you want to turn on or off. Uh, for more advanced custom events, you can modify and create custom events within the GA4 interface. Um, so this is a benefit if you aren't using Google Tag Manager. Uh, here at SpinUTech, we do use Google Tag Manager, and we prefer that method, uh, mostly because you can utilize all those tags and triggers you're building in Tag Manager and use those in other ad platforms if you're loading in pixels. Uh, so that way you're managing everything all in one place, but you do have the option within GA4 to do that as well. And then we do have some additional tag settings in here that we can click into. Um, this is where you can configure your domains if you have some cross domain tracking. Um, so really, and then you can also look through the history. So that's the data stream. Um, so now that event uh, data is coming in through enhanced measurement, you would be able to see those enhanced measurement events here. You'd also be able to see any custom events that you are sending to GA4 here in this panel. Uh, and also gives you a count of the recent events you're getting and a quick delta change, uh, just so you can come in here quickly and alert on any anomalies you're seeing. You'll also notice that we have this Marcus conversion uh, column here. And what this does is you toggle it on for any event that's when you would now see it in this conversions area. And what this does is it pulls it into those conversion reports that I'll uh, pull up in a, in a bit. And you can see your conversion rate on these um, and you can turn them off and on. So you're really controlling what conversions you have. And this would be the replacement for goals that we had in Universal Analytics. Uh, there are no longer goals or destination-based goals and instead you would rather use an event for conversions. Couple more things in here. Uh, we do have audiences. So you can configure your audiences in here based on your events that are firing. You can target users um, that may have had an event, users that abandoned. There are some templates built into here that you can use as well, such as cart abandoners if you have e-commerce set up. Uh, and then from here, you can really export it to the ad platforms and use it in that way. Last thing I'll touch on in the admin is this custom definitions. Um, so as Jeremy mentioned, all the events we're sending over, we can now send any parameters along with those events that we want. So instead of category, action, and label, um, we can now have custom named parameters. So coupons in here, member, you can add them in here. Um, so if you're sending an event through Google Tag Manager and you haven't added a custom dimension in here to map to it, you won't see that in the GA4 reports. So just keep in mind if you're configuring your events and you're missing some parameters in your reports, just to come in here to make sure that you've added them as a custom dimension or metric. And with that being said, I'll just hop into the reporting. So here I am on the home screen. I'll just point out a couple housekeeping things that you'll see throughout the whole reporting suite in GA4. Um, anytime you see this arrow on a metric, you can change it. 
Um, so for this example, we're just seeing users. Um, this screen in general will learn as you use more GA4. Um, they'll drop down your recently accessed links in here. So this is really kind of your customized page. Um, again, going back into this arrow, another thing I wanna point out here is we can see the user count. And say I wanted to switch to a different metric, you can go ahead and do that. And as I'm typing in users, you'll see we have a few different user metrics. Now we have both users and total users. Um, so just keep in mind the users count refers to engaged users. So total users will also include those who had bound sessions. So whenever you see this users metric in reports, just keep in mind that that usually refers to the engaged users and not the total users, uh, but you can flip between them. Getting into the report suite. So the top level headings such as lifecycle and user, those refer to as collections. Um, you have full control over your collections. You can add pages and remove them from the template gallery. Uh, just to hop into some of these reports and show off a little bit of what we have. So you'll see under these, most of these have an overview section and then there's more detailed reports underneath. So in the overview section, you'll usually see these visualizations. Um, we're not seeing too many charts in terms of uh, those flat tables like we're used to in universal analytics. Those would be more so in the detailed reports. Uh, and again, you can come in here and change the arrows to look at the different metrics that you're seeing. And as you drill down further, um, most of these links will link back into another report in here. So if I just click this user acquisition, it would bring me to this report in here. A couple things to note about the acquisition reports as we've gotten some questions. So the user acquisition report refers to that user's first session or their first click onto your site. Um, so this would be the new user's first session. Uh, again, we have arrows here, so we can also, you know, drill down to source or medium. If we wanted to see that in addition to the channel, we can also add a secondary custom dimension to any report with this plus button. And so we're looking at the first user acquisition, so we wanna see their first source as well. Um, if you need anything more than two custom dimensions, that's when you would create a custom report in the exploration section. Uh, I won't cover that too much today. Um, it's a little bit more in depth, but just to keep in mind, if you need more than two, that would have to be a custom report. A couple more things to point out. Um, anytime you see the dotted line on a metric, you can click on it and get a definition of it. Um, so if you're ever confused on what you're looking at, what type of user count, this is a great way to just get a quick tool tip. And lastly, I will pop into the advertising section. So this is really where we're getting into more of the kind of machine learning that GA4 brings to the table. Um, we can look at the different models for attribution in here. So these all channels report is similar to the one that's in the default reporting. But if you come in here to model comparison and conversion paths, you can drill down a little bit deeper. Uh, so the model comparison will let you compare the different attribution models. Uh, so by default, GA4 uses a cross-channel model, uh, the data-driven one. So if you're looking at an ad platform and trying to compare conversions, this is a great place to come to to see if the attribution model might be where you're seeing a discrepancy. Um, and you can flip between them just to compare them. And then under conversion paths, that's where we're seeing our early, mid, and late touch points. Um, so you can really come down here, look at each channel, and see um, all the touch points throughout a user's journey. And then you can um, configure between these which one you actually want to drill down into further. Um, so that's going to be very helpful for strategy. Um, and with that being said, I will turn it over to Anna uh, to discuss more of the strategic implications. Thank you, Jenna. And as Jenna and Devin mentioned, my name is Anna Pritchard. I am a data science team lead here at Spinutech. And I will be talking through some of the enhancements that GA4 has to offer and how we can use that for reporting, insights, and action for our marketing efforts. 
Uh, what I'm going to be talking about today are two main themes that both Jeremy and Jenna mentioned in their previous slides here. The first one being that GA4 is very event is a, an event-based model. And as Jeremy mentioned, um, it's the biggest enhancement that GA4 has to offer. And what that means for your marketing strategy is that you can get very granular in your user journey insights. So every single um, touch point that a user has on the website is now considered an event. And with that being said, we can now start to see the way that users are uh, behaving with your website. This screenshot here is actually an example of an explore report that Jenna showed on the previous demo here. And what it shows is the journey that a user takes from the event of a session start to all of the different page view events to the additional events that GA4 has to offer, including if a user scrolled down the page, maybe they added or removed an item from a cart. And now with GA4, we can really understand this user behavior in one view and be able to make those actions based on the data that we are seeing. Which brings me into my second point for our, the biggest impact that GA4 has on our marketing strategy is based on the user-centric data that GA4 has to offer. Again, as Jeremy mentioned, a huge enhancement that GA4 has done has been to identify users on a more accurate basis. What that allows us to do for our marketing efforts is to create audiences based on those more accurate definitions of a user. With that, what you can do is you can create audience inside of GA4 and send those audiences to Google Ads for your targeting efforts. You can see an example here at the bottom right that are some Google defined audiences. For example, if somebody was currently active on your website and didn't purchase anything on your website, you can create an audience for that, send it to your Google Ads to create some remarketing audiences there. Um, but because you have full control over your events that are defined inside of GA4, you can create audiences that are very specific to your business or to your website. You can use those audiences in the same exact way by sending those audiences to Google Ads for more specific targeting. Uh, what we have seen um, and heard in the, the world is that uh, this is definitely helps more efficient dollars inside of your paid search efforts particularly. So again, there's a ton of enhancements that GA4 has to offer. These are two main ones that we have seen that a lot of clients are utilizing with their GA4 instance. And with that, I will send it over to Jeremy to give a summary of what we have talked about today. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Um, so again, uh, just to kind of recap, if I was to kind of look at this presentation and, and, and leave here and think of five maybe key takeaways, I know there's more than this. Uh, I might bucket into some of these. So the first, obviously, as we all know, and we alluded to multiple times, Universal Analytics will stop collecting that data um, on July 1st, and potentially that property may be uh, completely removed from the Google Analytics instance. Um, and then as Jenna alluded to, and when she went through some of her reporting, just just keep keep tabs on that user count, right? So when you, when you look at total users, that's going to be users who just visited your website. That's going to be a lot of the metric that you're used to with universal analytics where GA4 focuses on the active users, which is going to be not, not just the total users that came to the site, but those that actually had an engaged session, meaning they actually showed some sort of engagement on the site. So going to be a little bit different there. Um, just keep that in mind. And Jenna, I'll let you hit on these last three. Sure. And yeah, just to reiterate again, GA4, it's an event-based model. So all of your form fills, phone calls, all of that will now be events. Um, you can build those custom events in GA4, but we do recommend using a tag management system just to keep it in a centralized location and allow for more versatility and control over those events. And lastly, for the default channel groupings, just keep them in mind uh, that unassigned bucket might be data that's still processing. Um, and GA4 also buckets uh, the UTM slightly differently than universal analytics. So just be methodical when you're setting your UTMs to make sure they're bucketing where you would expect. And with that, I will pass it over to Devin to kick off the Q&A. Fantastic. Thank you, crew, as always. Um, we appreciate your guys' attendance today in the interest of time being real and that we want to be respectful. Uh, if you need to drop, no worries. Understand all of this is recorded and you will get a copy of the recording um, later, later today. So if you need to drop, no worries. We are going to jump in. We've got uh, two quick questions here that I think we probably have time to get to. 
Uh, the first is if GA4 only retains data for 14 months, is there a way to preserve that historical data beyond the 14 month window? Yeah, and I can take that one, Devin. Uh, we de Google has definitely recognized that, um, you know, that 14 month retention period, some individuals may need to look at their data past that. Uh, the most uh, efficient solution for that would be to send data to BigQuery, which is Google's instance of a data warehouse. And um, with GA4, it is actually a free integration between sending data from GA4 to a BigQuery instance. And with that, you can send data on a weekly cadence, on a daily cadence, whatever works for you and your business. And that allows uh, BigQuery to house that data uh, for as long as you would like inside of BigQuery, not inside of GA4. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, next one on the list here. Compared to UA, is GA4 a more complex platform? And maybe some clarity there. Will someone who understands how to use UA be able to pick up how to use GA4 relatively quickly or intuitively? Yep, I can take that one. Um, so there's a lot to unpack in that question. I would just say it definitely has a different look and feel. Um, so the first time, if, if, if those on the call have never been into GA4, I would just... <laughs> I would recommend you kind of get in there and start just poking around. You're going to notice, obviously, kind of if you've ever used Firebase, it's going to have a very similar looking UX to that. Um, but overall, um, I do think it offers additional features that are going to be more powerful down the road, especially with the whole data privacy landscape changing and machine learning really coming um, strong. So the event-based model will definitely support some of those things and allow us to kind of get, get to that point to have better data. And I would just say, too, on the final note of that, um, if you were comfortable with universal analytics, you know, maybe it took you some time, but you got comfortable with it. Um, you'll definitely get to that same point with Google Analytics 4. It might just take a little bit of time. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Next on the list here. Um, how does GA4 define an engagement on your site? Is it a click, a scroll? Can we dive into what exactly that looks like? Maybe in a little more detail. Sure, I could speak to that one. Uh, so basically, the engagement metric would really refer to the events that you're collecting on your site. Uh, so if you're firing off a few events when a user lands on the page, that would count as engagement. Um, so really, a page view of more than one is an engagement, a scroll counts an engagement, a link click, or a conversion event. Um, so really, it's just kind of referred to almost as the opposite of a bounce, a user that just enters the site, doesn't complete any actions, and then leaves. Uh, however, if you are firing events when a user enters the site, just keep in mind that that will impact your engagement rate, and it might skew the data a little bit and look a little bit more engaged than the users actually are. Perfect. Okay. Um, I've got another quick one here. Is it easy to hook your Google ads to GA4? Can we talk about that uh, a little bit? Yeah, I can take that one. Similar to Universal Analytics in your admin section in Google Analytics 4, there should be, there is a Google ads linking um, and it is very easy. Uh, it's pretty be streamlined, uh, similar to Universal Analytics uh, for a click of a button to connect the two platforms. Perfect. Once again, Anna never ceases to disappoint with the her Intuitive answers. Thank you, my dear. Not disappoint is what I meant there. Sorry about that. Um, okay. We're going to close up shop here. If we didn't get to your questions, um, we know that we will share those with the team here and, and we will look to kind of get those answered here uh, over the next day or so as we kind of push this out to you. So um, in closing, um, you know, I first want to thank everybody here, uh, everybody for attending. I want to thank uh, Jeremy, Jenna, and Anna for your insightful um, take on this transition to GA4. I really appreciate that. Um, quick announcement. Our next webinar is coming up at the end of June, um, and we will actually be partnering with one of um, our nearest and dearest partners, Basis Technologies. Uh, together, we're going to be talking about how to recession-proof your marketing in times of economic uncertainty, which I'm sure a lot of you have been dealing with uh, over the past year, year and a half. Um, we're going to focus specifically on the paid media side. So uh, whether that's you or someone within your organization, please feel free to share that info. Um, because you attended uh, the webinar today, you'll automatically get an invitation to that one. Feel free to share it. Um, and lastly, as I mentioned before, if we didn't get to your questions or you have other questions that come out later, please feel free to submit those to webinar at spinutech.com and we will get those out to the appropriate team members. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you for those that uh, stuck around. 
Uh, have a great rest of the week and we will see you all very soon.